Hi, welcome to everyone's favorite segment, Mailbag in 2021. Something happened last year, I don't know, glitch in the matrix, whatever, it's 2021, let's get into it. Talk about the backdrop later, but um, we've got one from, I think, comes from a fellow content creator you might know and love. So it comes from Amy, hmm, let, let's just say it comes from Bruce. No worries, Bruce, in, uh, in Can Loops in British Columbia. So yes, thank you very much, Amy slash Bruce slash possibly a creator you know in uh, Canada. So hi to all of my Canadian viewers. So let's check it out. This one has been in the works for quite some time. I actually thought it went missing in the post, but it turns out that uh, Amy slash Bruce slash unknown content creator has um, only just recently sent this. But if you watch this creator's channel, uh-oh, uh-oh, something's happening here. And ah, oh, triple five, we've got a triple five. Beauty, look at that. Oh, what a Bobby Dazzler. Oh, you might, you might, get, a, you might get a feel for what's inside a tap chart. Uh, fantastic, and danger, <laughs> I've got to say it, danger not to be operated by fuckwits. So, yep, I'm going to use the language, um, oh, I've, got, I've got two of them, beauty, so, <laughs> you may, oh, oh, this is, oh, you can just feel the quality in this, oh, and the weight as well, must have cost a fortune to send, thank you very much, oh, look at this. What a Bobby Dazzler. Um, that looks like there's no, there's no clips on it or anything. Oh, it's just beautifully honed wood. Oh, hang on. <sighs> Beautiful, is that, is that the Canadian wood? Fantastic, let's open it up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at this. Oh, <laughs> it's the Dave Jones Widlerizer. Oh, this is. <laughs> This is the best thing that's ever come in the mailbag. Thank you very much. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's got some heft in it. Wow. Thank you very much, AVE or Arduino versus Evil. When was the last time you did an Arduino video? But anyway, AVE, thank you very much, LinkedIn. So if you're not subscribed to AVE, do yourself a favor. Um, a bit of an acquired taste. The uh, If you think my lingo is something, wait until you hear AVE. Anyway, oh, Widlerizer, look at that. He actually uh, machined this, of course. I may not even be able to find the video where he actually uh, machined this thing. Apparently he created a, like, you know, like half a dozen of them or something. And um, he sent me one, thank you very much, and personalized it as well, the Dave Jones Widlerizer. That will take pride of place on the shelves here, and of course, it will get some action for a, uh, if you don't know, um, Bob Widler famously um, invented the Widlerizer, so if a part was really peeing him off, he would smash it with his hammer. And so, yeah, the Widlerizer, look at that. Is that Canadian timber? Oh yeah. Ah, oh, beautiful. Thank you very much, AVE. Ha <laughs> ha, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Jeez, that's got some heft in it. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm gonna have some fun with this. Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop and a treat especial. More copper than I ever seen. We'll make this, uh, I'll make this available as a file, so if and you wanna print your own. She ain't tea bag, if I do smell so myself. Two inch by two inch face. 50 by 50 millimeters if you're the continental type. Beautiful copper. She's girthy. Got some gravity in her. Now if in your uh, type needs to widerize things or a mechanical bent, it could use a soft faced adjustment, you know, a, a percussive maintainer. All right, let's widerize this bastard with some five pound copper. It's that pain in the ass aircon switch that caused me years of problem. Here we go. Oh, look at it. Oh, yeah, let's go. Oh, oh, one hit. One hit. What a Bobby Dazzler. Look at that. Oh, best widerizer ever. Damn, that felt good. Oh, 
Look at this gorgeous Canadian craftsmanship. Beautiful. For those with a wider eyes of fetish. Thanks, AVE. Sorry about the audio in the previous segment. That was my new wireless Go mic. Didn't quite have the settings right. It's easy to goof up with the bar graphs. Not only the bar graph on top of the unit, but also the uh, bar graph inside, the, like the adjustable microphone input zoom on the ZV-1 camera I'm using now. Yes, I am using a new camera, the ZV-1. I've done videos on that, including my new kit. So anyway, let's talk about the bench in the backdrop. I did actually do a poll on this. I polled my users about the uh, backdrop here, should I actually um, keep the TV here? And I, I was kind of surprised because I, I don't suspect that I think it's a bit distracting and but the poll clearly showed that the majority of viewers actually liked the having the bench on the big TV in the backdrop. So I don't know, leave it in the comments down below because uh, like I was getting a lot of complaints about the backdrop but the poll clearly showed everyone wanted it. So here we go, Gary Bertram. This is uh, Gary Bertram's uh, lab. He's from uh, Victoria. Hi to all my Victorian viewers. You might be able to tell it's sort of RF here. It's actually avionics. This is inside an aircraft uh, hangar in uh, Victoria. And of course, he's got the EV Blog YouTube channel and the webpage as well. I have got to have the forum as well, the EV Blog forum. Might as well sit here so I'm in shot, right? Anyway, um, yeah, avionics. Um, that's I don't know what that is. It's some sort of look. Looks like a center. Looks like a like a dip meter. I, I I'm not an RF guy. Anyway, it looks like center. It's got green that way, red that way. So it's some sort of uh, centering meter. But lots of RFE goodness. The things I like are uh, like stuff I've worked on before. Um, dedicated test instruments here. So you can see all these dedicated patch panels. This is for uh, testing dedicated test setups for testing. Uh, aircraft transponders and things like that. I've done that transponder uh, tear down, so it's quite appropriate. Maybe Gary can fill us in on some of the more uh, dedicated test gear here. Anyway, um, yeah, I love the uh, thumb wheel. Look at all the thumb wheel switches in there. You can't get the thing about the TV in the background is you can't really get it in detail. I could let me know. I was thinking maybe get rid of the TV and actually do this segment as the Dave Green Dave uh, floating head with the high res picture that I can then zoom into. I can do that at the editing stage instead of just sitting here in front of the TV. Let me know. Anyway, I was quite surprised about that poll. As I said, this is what I could do for a, like every mailbag, I could do one or two benches like this with the floating Dave head and then we can go in and have a look at detail. Like if we want to have a look at what some of the manuals up here, look, we can read them. Absolutely fantastic. We can go in here and we can have a look at uh, specific bits of kit like this one. Obviously the more uh, detailed the photograph the better the higher resolution the better and the sharper it is and all that sort of jazz but yeah um just let me know what you prefer because i don't i i think this is better than the tv see we can i i just can't get this with the tv in the background it's impossible anyway look at all the patch panels here oh these are absolutely uh fantastic love it and oh look at it. look at the thumb wheel switches that's actually not that is that a commercial bit of kit that could be a commercial bit of kit i don't think that's actually custom so anyway yeah but uh, you know these patch panels definitely are see it's you know it's it's a tester thing so there you go specific tester don't even try and find info on that i doubt you'll ever get it <laughs> so i think it's yeah it's a custom design king gold crown three yeah, it's a you know a dedicated test set for some transpondery type thing so yeah anyway i think that's like potentially much cooler Anyway, let me know in the comments down below. I, I just think that works much better. Could I have like a, you know, a, a test bench Tuesday or something? <laughs> That's an old school uh, Tektronix 200 series. Wow, the 210 or the 220, amazing. But um, the old school uh, oscillator up here, that looks like an old school GW one. Looks like all of this stuff here is all uh, dedicated uh, special design instrumentation. Please correct me if I'm wrong, Gary, but uh, it looks like we have a few uh, communication, a couple of uh, identical, they're like one of those communication uh, receivers or something like that, perhaps. But yeah, dedicated test setups and of course all the manuals that have all the schematics and all the repair uh, stuff and all the uh, calibration alignment information for all of the different 
aircraft instruments and transponders and stuff. So that's pretty cool. I like that. So that's a great example of a dedicated workbench for a specific task. It's not a general purpose uh, lab workbench or home workbench. It's set up specifically uh, to test, repair, calibrate, align, whatever, um, the aircraft instrumentation. Beauty. Now, because I've got a lot of packages here on the mailbag bench, I'm gonna have to actually go through these very quickly. So please forgive me if I don't spend any more detailed time on any particular one. If you wanna see like a like me spend more time, maybe I can put it up on the second channel for anything that's particularly interesting. And yes, the TV is gone because it's actually on casters. I can just move it. So let me know what you think with, you know, I could maybe hang something on the wall here. I, I don't know. Anyway, sorry, um, I can't open this. I did open this one on camera, but it was for a previous uh, mailbag. I didn't have time to include it. Sorry, uh, Paul B. This is actually a uh, crowd supply uh, project. And it's a... <laughs> so put that awesome little project of yours in an enclosure. This is actually kind of a neat idea. What it is, is it's the Kokayo? Uh, Kaikaio? Anyway, it's a case. It's designed to be like a, a nice, uh, clear, see-through case for your design. So it's an open source case. So like, don't worry about the PCB in there. These are just uh, examples. Oh, I love the new ZV-1 camera. You can just hold stuff up like this and oh, it's a Bobby Dazzler. Anyway, um, yeah, it's an open source project take case. So let's take a quick look at it. So check it out. Comes in small, medium, large and extra large. Thank you very much. Doesn't look uh, quite sexy when you put it in there. That's a uh, clear solder mask on that uh, puppy. So you can see the copper. I um, you know, I'm do have a bit of a soft spot for the old clear solder mask. It looks good. So it's got a durable 18 gauge stainless steel chassis, black powder coated finish, uh, top plate form from acrylic, uh, PMMA for those playing along at home, uh, PCB templates compatible with most major e EDA tools, so they've got like the templates available, 3D models are available, keyhole slots for wall mounting, ideal for prototype and permanent installations, adjustable lid to accommodate expansion. So, cool bananaries. Um, yeah, there it is. Look at those. There's the hooks on the back. So you can just uh, poke those out. That's kind of nice. So a you know, tiny little slither in there. You can see that. Itty bitty slither. That'll just poke right out with a screwdriver. Well, <laughs> get a big uh, flat braided screwdriver in there and just give it a bit of a twist. And that'll pop straight out and you've got your uh, keyholes. Bobby Dazzler. At first I thought they were integrated steel feet. But no, they're uh, rubber baby buggy bumper feet, I think. I think they are. Yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> There's the complete kit it comes with. That's great. And I'm glad to say that they uh, met their funding goal and you can buy any one of these um, sizes you like for 20 bucks. They're all the same price. Beauty. So thank you very much, Paul. If you're in the uh, market for one of these cases, I'll provide the link to Crowd Supply down below. Beauty. Thank you very much, Hype, H-Y-P-E, uh, from Hong Kong. Hi to all my Hong Kong viewers. Obviously, they've sent two in. I can't remember if they uh, came at the same time or whatever. One box. Got a styrofoam case. It's obviously delicate. Hi, I love the vintage. Oh, vintage, vintage, vintage. Oh, actually, this could be, spoiler alert, this could be the, uh, I think this is the original foam. It came in. Um, obviously, it didn't have the original external box, but we do love vintage gear and we love multimeters here on the EV blog. Oh, look at it. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. Oh, there's not much weight in it. I kind of, like, you know, you expect a bit of heft. You expect a bit of heft in, uh, you know, old school analog. Oh, no, no, no. Is that, is that the strap that is that the carry handle that comes with it no it's just plastic no everything feels it feels plasticky anyway we have ourselves an analog vom look at that um this looks pretty new it's like a simpson knockoff kind of thing um none of those are shrouded banana plugs you don't want that rub rubbish on a uh, vintage analog meter is this like a like a new thing trying to tap into a market a Type 500 multimeter in its modernized uh, current production variant MF500. Uh huh. Uses both a C cell and a 9 volt battery. Overall, a platform of multimeter has been in production in China since the 1960s. Wow. So, this is a local Chinese 
and analog of OM from the 60s. Wow, if you grew up in China in the 90s, this is the classic uncle who's an electrician multimeter. <laughs> wow, fantastic. Yours truly a quiet subscriber. Thank you to all the quiet subscribers. Um, that's, yeah, oh, that handle's chintzy. I don't like that. Let's have a look at, he said two, did he? Hang on, there's tons of stuff in here. Wow, what an overload of, Oh, it's a, that, that's a respirator. <laughs> no, sorry, it's not 2020 anymore. <laughs> Don't need that. Thank you, though. <laughs> Aha, we have a pocket multimeter, a, an, an KN95 respirator. Um, 10, oh, these are the pads for the respirators. Okay, Soviet-era 1980s Vontron 3 civilian night vision viewer. Jeez, <sighs> this mailbag is supposed to be quick. Oh, I found another one from Hype. Um, <laughs> this is, no, you can't have three sucks of the salve on the same mailbag. Bonus bubble wrap. Oh yeah, that was the other, that was the other old school VOM promised. Like, is that like, so that's the original, is it? And then we've got the new modernized replacement. That'll be interesting. We can do a, an, an AB comparison. Yeah, that's possibly a 70s jobby. So there it is, the old and the new, the original R500 and the new MF500 here. And they look pretty much identical, don't they? Um, anyway, it's got uh, 2.5 kilovolt uh, dedicated range here. That looks like it's got an asterisk there. That looks like the common um, positive and uh, the DB input. Um, and yeah, you're dedicated 2500. But yeah, I, everything looks... A good job keeping everything absolutely identical. You got your zero ohms uh, adjust. Not oh, that feels that feels really crusty burger. So anyway, 20 k ohms per volt movement. Wonder if it's a uh, taut band jobby. But uh, is that a date code down there? But uh, very interesting to see an analog meter like this specific uh, for the Chinese market and dating back all that way. See if you can spot the difference on that movement. It looks. Near identical. Wow. Like, I'm not really seeing a difference there. Um, <laughs> really, that's, it's remarkable that they kept it absolutely identical all these decades later. Love it. The backs are near identical on them. Let's crack it open. They've plugged me. I can't, is that like a calibration tamper resistant seal or something? I don't know how to get that out. Oh no, it's just not the same. Come on, surface mount rubbish. Give me a break. And the wiring, discrete wiring going over to the battery thing. I much prefer this. Look at this gorgeous interface that just uh, connects like, you know, tabs straight through. I like, it just press tabs. Oh. No, nah, there's no contest there. And you can see the uh, the three battery terminals there up under the meter movement. Oh, God, like, come on. That's much, much better. Oh, disappointed. Oh, these surface mount rubbish. Look, and they got one token through hole resistor here. That's just, oh, yeah, that's just going. That's the 2500 volt input. So, yeah, it's, it's just not the same. Look at this. Look, look. It's not quite a triplet, is it? But, you know, it's made in China. But, um, yeah, it's, it's good to see. And the 2500 volt input resistor, the, the, the pissant little one there. Look at the ginormous one here they've got under this um, insulating sleeve. Ah, oh, beautiful. But I'll give it to them. They have kept the same construction ring arrangement on the pot there. Check it out. So there you go. So, yeah. Yeah, just goes around like that. That's the, ah, uh, that's the ohms adjust. So they've kept that. They've kept the spirit of it alive there, but it's just not the same. And that is the chintziest <laughs> carry strap I've ever seen. <laughs> that's terrible, Muriel. All right, let's give her a try. 1.5 volts, or a little bit over. Oh, geez, that's got some overshoot, doesn't it? I think we've got ourselves a little torty band. Wow. Let's compare that with the new jobby. Oh yeah, that one's better. Look at that. Oh, I didn't zero it, did I? <laughs> and let's look at a real meter, triplet 630 NA, thank you very much. Oh, look at that. 
Well, a Chinese N95 mask. That was uh, that was the joke of 2020, wasn't it? <laughs> there you go. Look at that bad. It's strong. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. Put the valves inside, and uh, that's where the that's where the filter goes. I guess you just ah. Uh, Crack that open like that, and it's going to. Oh, yeah, it flips down. Right, there you go. <laughs> that looks sus, doesn't it? Si Chang. Yeah, I don't know, all you mask aficionados out there, uh, rate that one. And here we go, we have a Russian Voron 3 night vision viewer. Uh, it seems to have an issue though, I don't know exactly what the issue is, but particular unit performs a lot poorer than the rest of the units I obtain. Produces a very dim image or no image at all when very dark places, while the other units seem to have no trouble under the same conditions. However, I do not believe this is a result of aging or bright light damage due to lack of scint scintillation noise in the dark. A telltale sign of an aged intensifier tube is low SNR with very high scintillation noise and a lack of significant blems or burn marks on the image. Hmm. The lack of scintillation noise also suggests there may be an issue with the intensifier tube's AGC control. Would normally increase the voltage to the microchannel plate in the dark and reduce it when exposed to lights. When the microchannel plate is given a high voltage, it, it releases a lot of stray electrons into the phosphor screen, which will produce the signature scintillation noise. However, the AGC in this unit seems to be able to increase gain enough to produce scintillation or a decent image in the dark. Bit of good news, according to a Russian friend of mine, the unit... And even the intensifier tube is really easy to service. This unit was made before they potted intensifier tubes electronics. Nice. Um, in resin. So as long as you can remove the intensifier tube from the unit, remove the plastic. So all the PSU and gain control components should be readily accessible. A little about the unit. It's a very early Soviet second generation night vision unit that uses a fill-in intensifier tube. According to the Russian, uh, the uh, bleh, tubes are basically tubes where specs did not meet military requirements and hence placed in a unit sold to civilians. Billions. The EPM 26G intensifier has a fiber optic input and a straight phosphor output. It's basically the same format as tubes used in Soviet military 1PN50 viewers and rifle scopes. The only specs I can dig up are as follows. There you go for you uh, night vision aficionados. Um, the 20 milliamp drawer. Also threw on a pocket multimeter. Um, thank you very much, quiet subscriber. Oh, look at that. that that's, a, that's a beefy lens on that puppy isn't it is that is that just the lens i don't i don't know much about um intensifier tubes it's got a um is this like a mount for is this like a, a rifle scope or some other scope mount or tripod mount or something like that does anyone uh, anyone have any idea hmm anyway it's uh too much for the mail bag um i've got some acrylic on there so yeah, look at that. Look at that bad boy. Wow. Whoa, a bit, bit crusty burger. Whoa. Whoa, crusty burger at the end there. There we go. We've got the... Is that just the lens? Wow. That's a thread and a half. Here you go. Yep. Yeah, that's just a lens. Look at that bad boy. Look at that. Wow. And there you go. I have no idea what I'm looking at. But I'm sure people in the comments will. So, yeah. How do we... Yeah, the screw's on here. So, no, it's, I, I won't do that for the mail bag because I'll go down a rabbit hole. That comes off too. So, yeah, I don't want to... Yeah, it, it's too far down the rabbit hole for the mail bag. Anyway, there's the end. There's the... Uh, fo that's the phosphor um, end on it. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know about the inside construction, but that probably would make an interesting teardown and possible repair. I don't know if anyone's got more details, like a schematic or something. That'd be quite handy. Hmm. So thank you very much, Quiet Subscriber, for that vintage haul. That's very cool. Um, <laughs> night vision and a Chinese analog meter. Oh, we've got a pocket meter. It's a greener meter. Does that, it's like, does that mean it's like, Greta Thunberg approved or something. Um, here we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So does anyone know what uh, one this is rebadged? Like who? who's the actual manufacturer? It's probably not greener, you know. Um, EM3081. There. Yeah. There. Oh, no battery. Oh, boo. And there she is inside. Nothing special at all. We're being blobbed and uh, well, it's actually got a glass fuse. It's got a fuse. Um, yeah, because yeah, it measured. Oh, yeah, it did, uh, did current. There you go. 
So yeah, 200 milliamps max, but you know, like you don't use it for anything serious. I don't necessarily like uh, current on pocket multimeters. It's just really not something you generally need to do out in the field. But yeah, anyway, there's not much there. And is that like the reference or whatnot? Anyway, I'm not going to go into details. Nothing fancy pantsy. Couple of uh, LR40, or are they slightly bigger than LR44s? Hmm. Anyway, um, yeah. Nothing special, nothing to write home about, but I know these types of uh, form factor meters do have their fanboys, probably. Uh, they also have like a Voyager, you know, HP calculator as well. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris with a K from local Hoxton Park here. What are my viewers in Hoxton Park? I think we've had mailbag before from Hoxton Park. I don't know, is it from Chris with a K? These are always awkward, these jobbies. Uh, it's all right, know what I'm doing? I'm a professional. To Dave. Yeah, I'll, uh, for th some therapy, I'll break those later. Oh, 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 we've got lots of, uh, uh, oh, wow. Scope Pro, oh, and it's a, it's a tool. What's in here? It's an insulation cover for whatever is in here. I would presume it looks like, is it because we've got four oscilloscope probes, 200 meg jobbies, I won't read the note yet, because that spoils it. Oh, wow, cool. Oh, look, floppy. Oh. 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 Don't you hate a limp arm? <laughs> like, this is supposed to be a flexible, wow. That is the most flexible, I, I think it's a stand thing. Yeah, um, I, what are these? These are the um, PCB ITs I've, to go with the existing set I've got. I'll show you in a minute. Oh, yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, I got more of these. Uh, yep, 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 yep. This is PCB holding solution. This is great. I wanted this. Thank you very much, Anthony from k and Electronics in Southwest Sydney here. We are a father and son duo. Awesome. They have a passion for hobby electronics and robotics and we want to share that passion with students, hobbyists and makers around the world. We've noticed some of your recent posts on Twitter that you use in the first version of the uh, PCB-ite. Yes, I am. There it is. I've been uh, using this uh, PCB-ite uh, holder system for years. It was sent into the mailbag. I don't know what, how many years ago was it now. But anyway, yeah, absolutely uh, fantastic system. Them. Like these are a magnetic uh, base thing, and uh, and you put your PCBs in there. You can arrange it, of course, any configuration, and it's just great for holding PCBs. It's absolutely brilliant. But they've become the first uh, Australian distributor of the uh, Sense Peak. I actually didn't know who. I forgot who made them. It was just PCBite. Um, so it's sent the new PCBite kit, so you can upgrade your current set. Awesome. One large uh, PCBite, one insulation cover, four SP10 probe and test wires. That's what I'm interested in looking at because. Um, uh, uh, well, we'll explain in a minute. And uh, for 200 meg uh, hands-free oscilloscope probes, if you and that's the key, hands-free. You know that infamous third hand you always need in electronics. Well, this thing's going to help help out. Anyway, um, yeah, let's have a quick look at it and include a screwdriver set. Thank you very much, Anthony and son. Awesome. So we've got four 200 meg hands-free oscilloscope probes. So it'll be a regular-ish uh, 200 meg probe, but It'll have um, support for, literally, supporting them um, for the hands-free kit. So let's have a look. There we go. Oh, we've got a mini grabber as well. That's very nice. So let's have a look at the kit. Yeah, because they sent the, these are, because these will be magnetic as well, right? So that'll go on there. And it's just, I'm curious to know how this works, because this is just floppy. Um, I get <laughs> so if you buy the hands-free uh, probe kit, it comes with one of the uh, magnetic holders uh, like this. So you've got your regular uh, 200 meg scope probe, of course, that'll plug into your um, scope. It's a fixed 10 to 1, um, which is great. Because there is no standard probe on the top of this. There's a little uh, right-angled micro coax. But anyway, it does come with a little head. Whoop, whoop. Oh, be careful with this. I just uh, I just lost the spare tip there. It does actually come with this brilliant PCB probe head. And there it is. Look, you can see that's how it uh, screws on. So that's going to screw on to the end of the holder like this. And then you've got little micro coax connector. Oh, I, it's obvious. Duh, is that... Ooh, ooh, oh, damn, that's sharp. Um, yes, it does actually um, push in. Now, I... 
just dull. I'm so dumb. I just realized why it's floppy as, because it has to be. Because, right, so you've got the probe like this. The whole idea is it doesn't, like, it's not supposed to stand up on its own. There's supposed to be some downward pressure so that this probe, which we can screw into here like this, these are brilliant. These are great. Oh, trust me, you're going to want to get one of these once you see it. Look at this. That plugs into the side. What? Like that. There you go. And, of course, you're going to have a little uh, ground attachment which you can plug into there and uh, hook over. And But, of course, it you know there's no point if it stands up on its own. The whole idea is it has a little bit of weight. It's just floppy enough so it has a little bit of weight so that when you put it down on your contact that you're probing, it'll just go in slightly. You can see it just going slightly in like that. Not too much, but just enough pressure for that sharp point to penetrate uh, into your solder joint that you're trying to probe or your pin or whatever it is because, you know, you've got to get uh, past, like, the oxide coating and, uh, you know, you've got to have some sort of pressure on there. So that looks like it puts just enough pressure due to its own weight. Oh, that is, like, it's just gorgeous. And bingo, you've got yourself your third hand. So you could have four probes all hooked up, probing stuff, and you're completely hands-free. Just, I, ah, oh, this is worth every cent. I don't even have to try it out in practice to know how good this is. Because, like, I've done sort of, you know, stuff like this before, sort of like I've cobbled together stuff like this using regular oscilloscope probes and all sorts of like holders and things like that when you absolutely desperately need to, you know, hold a couple of probes on there and keep your hands free. But you can actually uh, cobble something together like using, you know, whatever holder you've got, be it a pan of ice or something like that, and your existing oscilloscope probe, you kind of put it in there, or one of those big uh, gooseneck type things. Yeah, here it is, one of these like gooseneck things, but these are, ah, oh, these are stiff as, look at it, you know, these are just absolutely insanely stiff, and you can do it with a lot of effort, you know, you can actually uh, you cl clamp your probe inside something like this, and you can get it in place, but it, it's just, it's really difficult. I've spent, you know, tens of minutes setting up uh, probing solutions before, but this is just, oh, God, it is so gorgeous. Wow, nothing beats a purpose designed solution like this. That's just incredible. So here's the new one they've sent, and this is the original one. I think like it was a Kickstarter originally. That's where it, uh, it came from. But um, yeah, like the spring in these, wish this was feel vision but yeah, that's like, it's really gorgeous. Has it got the same? Oh, that's even, that's even stiffer. Wow, it's stiff as. What that is in there, is that like a plastic ring or something so it didn't like cut through because this was just uh, bare metal so in theory it could have like shorted um, stuff out so it looks like they got some insulating sheets in there but yeah that's going to hold your board in place uh, not as high so like but it doesn't really I always thought these were a bit high so making them smaller I think's uh, I think's a winner but there's actually uh, two different types of probes supplied. I don't know if you get it with them or whether or not they're optional extra, but this is the SP-10, and the one we just looked at is the SP-200. I assume that's the 200 meg bandwidth one that matches it, hence, like, it's got a uh, shield on the top, and it's probably got, like, a as that would be, like, a four-layer board. It's hard to tell with the matte uh, black, and then you'd have the uh, controlled impedance signals running on the um, inside of that. Yeah, yeah, it's not running on the bottom. That's all ground plane on the bottom there. Uh, what's this? Just a, like a lower bandwidth solution? Is that like a times one or something? And this is actually the times 10? Hmm. Yes, Dave. RTFM. The SP10 is a passive uh, one to one hands-free probe. So it, yeah, there you go. It's exactly, uh, but well, I'll demo it uh, in a sec, but there you go. There's the bandwidth uh, for those playing long and high. And what is it? Uh, yeah, 10. I'm you know, I'm, you're lucky you get 10 megahertz on a times one probe. I've done a whole video, um, the secrets of time once one probes revealed or something it's called. It's quite good even if I do say so myself. So yeah, there's an example of it. You have your board mounted up on your uh, holders like this, and then you just have all four <laughs> probes hooked onto there. And it's just <laughs> like, it can't be beat. It's absolutely, if you need this, you need it. You should have a solution like this. It's worth, I don't care how much it costs, it's worth every cent. And for this application, they're actually recommending uh, 45 degrees like that. I would have gone in a bit higher than that, um, which is what they show on the uh, other ones here, but it's totally dependent upon 
the application, how you set it up. You just need a bit of experience with it to know what angle is going to work best. Damn, that is sweet as. Look at that. They've got a custom made a uh, metal sheet for me, and that's a, a I don't, yeah, if they like screen printed. On that, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. That is definitely going straight to the pool room, i.e. straight to the uh, soldering bench. And that's, you know, it's it's a magnetic base like that. So is that a uh, non-conductive uh, coating on there, I assume? But I'm going to use it up like that because it's got the EV block logo on it. There's also another uh, sheet here. I don't know what's what. So that's obviously got an insulative uh, sheet, uh, like a surface on top, so um, I'm not sure what which one's actually provided with the kit. And yeah, these uh, little rubber baby buggy bumper holders here, they're obviously like um, spare, uh, they're like little novel clips like that. You put them over and you can tie cables together. That's, that's brilliant. All right, I'm gonna try my first attempt at this. So I've got the probe like this. I've got the uh, 200 meg jobby. Oh, it just feels, God, you can, it just oozes quality. You can just, I, this is not feel, I wish this was feel a vision so you could feel it. But anyway, uh, you've got a ridiculously fine pitch down here. It's like, you know, um, it, unfortunately, it, like there's nothing in this that's going to stop um, slide in between pins and potentially shorting out uh, pins on a ridiculously fine pitch part like we've got here. Like, you know, there's just like, it's not going to magically uh, solve that. Even though I've got my glasses on, I wouldn't like to use that without magnification, but that, that just holds straight in there. That just like, it, it's straight on and it looks like it's, I can even give that a wiggle, 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 yeah. I'm not, I, like I'm jiggling that at the top and that is not budging. That is not sliding off that pin. So even though in theory it's possible, yeah, so what I've got to do is actually get out my <laughs> magnifying glass and which is my macro lens. And yeah, I wouldn't like to probe something of this fine pitch without some magnification. That's just, yeah. Uh, but once it's on there, geez, yeah, that's pretty good. I can wiggle that and that ain't budging. So that seems to, that's probably at that 45 degrees. So that seems to be a good angle. Like, and the weight of that, like it's not falling over. It's not collapsing or anything. So that's, can I, I can even bring it up like that and it hasn't, I can see and feel it hasn't slid off, the, it hasn't slid off that pin by me touching that. Wow, that seems to be perfectly balanced. I'm very, very impressed by that. So here's the manual. Have they got like, it's supposed to be 200 meg bandwidth, but I wouldn't expect, uh, see if they've got any bandwidth plots. No, they don't, but I wouldn't expect, you know, absolute stellar performance. 14 to 18 puff input cap, uh, 200, uh, 3 dB down at uh, 200 megahertz. So, you know, it's, um, its performance is going to be like more than adequate for most, uh, you know, general purpose users. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do, of course, is to actually uh, calibrate this on your scope as you would with any new probe. So we hook that up. We have a look at our vertical. There we go. It's a little bit roundy. So using the supplied adapter, and then uh, these are uh, termination adjust instead of uh, top probe adjust. Hence why they can get away with the uh, times one, because if all if all the compensation was in the top. Anyway, yep. Yeah, there you go. So no dramas at all. That's good enough for Australia. All right, I set up a uh, real probing example here, and I, I've only got two probes. Of course, you can go more complicated. I haven't checked the uh, data sheet for this chip here. I just, like, absolutely random example, but it looks like, like, 0.5 millimeter pitch, and I'm probing two pins side by side. Like, this would be, you know, normally you would have to go in there and, like, solder wires on or uh, get some other attachment point at, at some other end of the uh, circuit on a larger chip or maybe some, you know, resistor um, somewhere or something like that. But absolutely brilliant. And you can see I've only got one of the uh, ground probes hooked up at the moment. I've only got it to uh, channel one here, but um, it comes with various adapters. So I've chosen the pin header one, and of course it, I found a ground point over here like this. Ground is always going to be the hardest part of any uh, probing system like this. And you'll notice I've got no ground on uh, channel two here. So if we actually go over to the scope, here we go. Here's one I've uh, captured, and we can probably capture that again. Here we go. 
Can we, yeah, yeah, there we go. So you can see channel two is a little bit more loosey goosey there. Look at the uh, overshoot and undershoot and then really fast transition uh, stuff like obviously happening here. This is one short uh, transition here because we don't have a ground on channel uh, two there. Our signal integrity is not that terrific. But hey, this often doesn't matter. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to see that something's happening there or you want to see, you know, time in relationships or, you know, something else between these. You can see that channel two is like a bursty uh, thing there. There we go. If we trigger from our channel one there, you can see that uh, there's nothing happening on channel two until, unless we get lucky like that. But anyway, yeah, you can see that uh, here's a you know here's a good difference between like we get some undershoot here but it's yeah you know, it's not quite as uh, vicious as what we've got on channel two here without the ground of course you can go in and add grounds and stuff like that so that's always going to be the hardest part of this solution but what I wanted to show you is that this would be like you know it took me like less than a minute to set this up. This would be a pain in the butt to set up if I had to probe these two signals side by side on this tiny little pin pitch uh, package with regular probes. I'd have to solder on little mod wires or I'd have to find another tap or I might have to like scrape off some solder masks for a track somewhere or something like that. Like, you know, it really, you could butcher your board doing this, but you can see how nicely, and these are relatively balanced. Like, let's actually, might be tempting fate here, but let's, you know, it's like I'm, I'm wiggling that probe and it's staying on. Oh, you can't see it, sorry. I'm wiggling that probe and that's staying on. That is, that is not, not budging. I'm giving that one a wiggle. So yeah, even if you brush these things, they, they you know, this seems to have just the right amount of downforce on it, the weight that with the spring tip on there that gets uh, right into the pin. And uh, because it's a very sharp point, of course, once these things get dull, hence they supply with uh, spare uh, tips on it. Once they get a bit dull, it's going to be hard to see. I just bump that and nah, it's, it's, there we go. Look, I'm, I'm bumping my whole, bumping my whole thing there. And normally you'd completely come a gutter on something like that with regular probes. There's just no way you can get in there with uh, just uh, like the dimensions of your regular probes. So this is, uh, this is game changing. Uh, you've got to have one of these in your kit. Seriously. It's just, yeah, when you need it, this thing will save the day. So there's no high frequency uh, ground adapter, the usual like little springy clip or something like that that goes around your regular high speed probe. But even then, to use one of those, you've got to have a nearby ground point um, anyway. So you have to like scrape away your solder mask, you've got to solder something into a nearby ground plane or something like that just to actually make your high frequency uh, probe work. So, uh, you know, this has a similar sort of uh, signal integrity grounding limitations as your regular probe, but it just lets your probe stuff side by side and who cares about signal integrity when you can actually capture you know stuff like that oh there we go i got it see <laughs> and like you can just that's more than good enough so that's just fantastic for debugging oh look we've got a really that's a really short pulse on there on on channel one look at that look at that jobby wow what's that What's that time base? 50 nanoseconds. There you go that's like a uh, just over 20 nanosecond uh pulse there and it's doing pretty decently even though i've got this big antenna earth lead going over here like this um it's it's working just fine so from a signal integrity point of view this thing's as as good as you can expect from such a probing solution it's just this thing's going to find a pride of place here in the eev blog lab it's just brilliant i highly like as i said i don't even care about the cost you <laughs> need one of these it'll save your bacon and your sanity let me tell you oh the hair i've pulled out over the years trying to probe stuff like this oh did, no no oh where's the phone number for my psychologist as if it couldn't get any cooler, they've done the same for multimeters as well. You can get these little kit banana plugs um, to the pin headers and yeah, you can mount these on the same uh, mounts. Uh, brilliant. Oh, check out this tool. This is pretty cool. I like this. Look at this. It's all alloy and uh, you can just, how do you get these out? Oh, 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 there you go. Okay, you rotate and then you push. Yeah, rotate and push out. And then that just pull that back. That goes in there at any length. Ah, oh, look at that. Ah, oh, they said this is one of their favorite tools. Damn. Yeah, that, that locks anywhere along that 
shaft. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Wow. So this new PCBI wireless probe thing gets two thumbs up and a big fonz. Hi to all my viewers in the Ukraine. There you go. We've got some stamps and there's the address. Beautiful. Ukrainian stamps. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Oleg Kukov. Thank you. It says open with Dundee knife only. So, yep, we can do that. No whackers. This is the Crocodile Dundee knife. It is standard issue to all new Australians. If you get Australian citizenship, you do get a free Crocodile Dundee knife. But I am like First Fleet Australian. So, yeah, I'm as Australian as you can get without getting Aboriginal. So, uh, yeah, this one. I had to buy. Bummer. Okay, let's see what's in here. It's absolutely enormous. So, whoa. Hi, Dave. We have a, whoa. Is that a, is that a magazine? We do like magazines, but what is all this stuff? It's well packed. I'm going to make sure nothing gets, like there's nothing in the middle of that. It's just protecting this thing. It's an antenna. <laughs> Quick two minute tear down. Yep. No, we've got something else. Cool. We have a Star Wars sticker inside. Second suck of the sav for Oleg. Um, first of all, I know that you love space. Yes, I do. So you can see here more photos from my collection. Oh, yes. Right. Fantastic. That's M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. Look at that. Beautiful shot. This is M31. There you go. Fantastic. Nice wide field. Oh, look at this. Wow. That's the sun. That's a H alpha filter, three nanometer. H alpha filter for those playing along at home. Ha <laughs> ha, brilliant. Yes, you know I love it. Thank you, Comic-Con Ukraine. Oh, he got it signed in the, at Comic-Con. Awesome. Oh, I might frame that one. M42 Orion Nebula, fantastic. That's the Q2 Lovejoy Comet. Oh, like, wow, oh geez, that's detailed. Oh, wow. Wow, I'm not sure if this is showing up on camera, you know, lights and reflections and everything else. Center of the galaxy, Scorpio, Antares, Saturn, Saturn trails. Wow. This, ah, oh, this side up. <laughs> oh. Um, and uh, the streaks you can see on there, hopefully, they're, uh, yes, yeah, satellite streaks going across. Beautiful. Wonder what the exposure time on that is. That's, that's just gorgeous. Wow, so many de- look at the wide field and the detail on that. It's incredible. Wow, Radio Russia magazine been going since 1924. <laughs> it's like their equivalent of RTV and H, radio, television and hobbies. Oh, wow. We'll have a quick, like a 30 second squiz at that. Oh, construction projects, beautiful. And Radio Amateur magazine. Check that out. There you go. Fantastic. Oh, look at the amateurs on the front cover. Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, I'm trying to cut back. Oh, <laughs> but oh yeah, like I, I love the new, new ZV-1. I think it's working well. Watch this. Zoom straight in. Boom, straight back to me. Zoom straight in. <laughs> Fantastic. Best mailbag camera ever. Oh, we got some of that French rubbish too. A few magazine aficionados, check it out. Oh, it's got some English up the top. International Journal of Amateur and Professional Electronics. Anyway, let us know, any of my Russian viewers in the comments, do you uh, subscribe to this bad boy? Cisco. Sorry, I have no idea what I'm reading. I mean, you know, schematic, I know what I'm reading. But uh, apart from that, um, yeah, I... <laughs> no clue. Fancy pantsy new barcode. Yeah, construction projects, AT Mega 32, AVR, USB, uh, something or other. Oh, there we go. Oh, great stuff. Wow. And this one from 2008, Acticom. Um, is that like a Russian? Oh, I, I, I want to. Yeah, yeah, I thought I recognized it. Okay, so they're reselling those in uh, Russia. They re-advertise them. Oh, sweet. It's got all your local news. Ah, what's not to like? This one's... Got a splash of colour in it. All of our dip package dimensions and everything else. Somebody sent in their, you know, their little uh, home project. Neat. Some local amateurs, I'm assuming. Oh, that's a that's a nice homemade bit of kit, isn't it? That looks, uh, yeah, it's definitely a homemade. That certainly looks homemade, doesn't it? Nice. Is that like part of the big construction project? Neat. You still need a frequency counter. You know, there's still a thing. 
and they've got to have the consumer electronics on the back page to pay the phone, to pay the bills, don't they? With complete with some dancing chick. And I do believe I've got to stand back here um, because we have a giant schematic from a late 80s uh, TV, apparently. Back when it was back in the USSR. You don't know how lucky you are, boys. Back in the US. Back in the US. Back in the USSR. Look at that bad boy. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> 80s TV. Wow, I can't possibly uh, get you any detail on that. Like, uh, well, no, I can go in for some detail. Um, but still, like, yeah, there you go. Back when you actually got a schematic with your TV. Do any TVs come with schematics these days? I think so, but leave it in the comments if you know of one. And of course, you just knew they were going to include the overlays, didn't you? Look at this. Gorgeous. Nobody does that anymore. And then we have this uh, flat KU band satellite antenna found on AliExpress. Um, there you go. A local oscillator for 10,750 megahertz. None of that gigahertz rubbish. Uh, yeah, 10,000 megahertz. Thank you very much. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, won't see much. Well, I stand corrected. Check it out. Look at this bad boy. Got one big ground plane on the bottom. And check out the little spiral antennas. That, see, are they in, like, is that, no, that's just, a, that's just a plastic spacer, is it, between those? Um, so, I did, yeah, we're going to have to, I assume, like, there's a penetrator on each one and they're wired on the other side. Let's see if we can flip it over. Wow, that's interesting. Look at that. I can just pull out those individual elements. They just slide in there. Pull another rabbit out of my hat. Yeah, there we go. Um, did I just pull the wire out of the backside? Oops. So yeah, I like it's saying it's got uh, you know left circular uh, polarization because like it will have a polarization on it. Anyway, he's got more details on his website apparently. I'll link it in and uh, so that's oh I got all those off. No, there you go. They're not connected at all. They just um, penetrate straight through so i yeah once again anything over like one megahertz is rf magic um so <laughs> i don't know <laughs> like you know all you rf aficionados come on leave it in the comments how does this uh circular polarized uh 10 gig 10.7 gig antenna work but yeah it's look it actually uh so it connects through to there so that's Looks like that makes contact with the dimple in there, does it? But this, but of course the plate is uh, connected to the outer shield here. Um, but and then the the, uh, the coax is looks like it's connected to the just the top part of the sheet. So yeah, but of course even a shorted piece of metal is not shorted at 10 gig. Um, so it, yeah, it acts as an R. But anyone knows how those little floaty uh, circular antennary bits like that work to achieve that? Let us know. So yeah, Oleg is asking, um, there's a lot of antenna guys in the followers. There certainly are. Probably someone will be able to explain this construction. Um, uh, but anyway, build quality is crap. I can see lots of problems. So he's speculating that basically there's an antenna and that's basically, you know, it's an antenna. It's a little uh, circular polarized antenna, which has a little bit of inductance and it's a resonator box and then a low noise amplifier. So there must be an LNA under here. Oh yeah, this gets more interesting. Look at that. Got a solid die-cast alloy uh, box. Neat. Oh, check it out. Weatherproof, of course. Thank you very much. And, um, yeah, that just uh, pressure contacts down to there. I rather like that. That's neat. So, um, yeah, nothing special on here. Look, I don't know. I'm not going to try and uh, reverse engineer it or analyse. Couple of Got a couple of uh, PCB elements down here um, and up in there, but... Uh, yeah, I, what's, on, what's in that block? I've got to go one level deeper again. Oh, yeah, silly me, I forgot. That's actually uh, the output uh, there. So, of course, this will be uh, powered from a... This would be uh, coax uh, powered from... The, this supply would be uh, over coax. And, uh, yeah, this would be the output uh, amplifier. And that's the, of course, our... And that, of course, goes to our 
output uh, coax there, but our input is under here. There it is. There it is, because our bad boy, yeah, our bad boy comes in here. And there you go. For you RF aficionados, there is our RF section. Got your various distributed elements. There you go. Uh, classic. We've seen those in uh, many other videos. But uh, yeah, that's our low noise LNA front end. There's actually more in this um, than I expected. So yeah, anyway, anyone's got any uh, specialized knowledge on any of this, please leave it in the comments down below. Thank you very much, Oleg, who sends in good stuff. Anyway, he's on the Twitters and he's got a website. Link down below. Check him out. Give him a follow. It's got no name on it or it's in um, Mandarin. Sorry, I can't read it, but thank you uh, very much. Um, uh, is that is that Australia in Mandarin? Does anyone know? Because I, I could put it through, you know, one of those uh, newfangled smart shoe phone translatory things. But anyway, this has three classic vintage items in it. So... Bit of a vintage bonanza here today. You would think that 2021 would, you know, people would have forgotten about all this vintage stuff and left it by. No, it's more popular than ever. Everyone, you know, why do you want the, the 21st century when you can uh, nostal... Oh. oh, yeah, that's got a distinctive uh, 70s smell to it. Possibly earlier. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, that looks kick-ass, doesn't it? Check that out. Wow, look at the hinges on the back of that. Jeez, that, that looks like a Geiger counter of some description. Um, a new in box, new in box. I don't know what it is, but it's new in box. Vintage calculator. You know, we love vintage calculators here on the EV blog. Have we seen that one? Have we seen one that's similar? I, I like, not sure if it's the same one. Anyway, that's not just a four banger. That's that's full on scientific. Thank you very much. Okay, what is this? I got Alpha Riga. No idea. So I got some. T no, no, no. It's a. I, I was expecting like a component or something. It's a, like a. Look, that was like a bedside clock radio. Um. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. It's already coming apart. Um, I just, oh, spared no expense. <laughs> Check it out. Got our vacuum fluorescent. Doesn't that look gorgeous? That is, that is very nice. I like that. Oh, yeah. What's the, uh, got some blackening over on that side, but, uh, yeah, I just, just, they look gorgeous, don't they? But look at the chippy. Look at it. Genuine rusky. Genuine rusky chippy. And, um, yeah, it's, it, is that a crystal? And a little trimmer? Oh, goodness. And the tin plate phenolic base board with all the flux residue. Ah, wow. Is that a, uh, that looks like a, some sort of piezo, um, transducer element. That's the, that's the buzzer. That's the alarm buzzer, I would presume. Anyway, um, there's our, <laughs> that's our internal transformer. Look at that. The little uh, fuse thing on the back. I actually kind of think this is kind of cute in a way. Like, I, I like the, <laughs> the big buttons on top. Um, <laughs> that's, it's just, I don't know. It's kind of retro-y cute, I guess. Retro Soviet cute. Anyone got a date on that? I don't know. Check out this bad boy. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the I don't know what Mark Y one, but that probably means like Mark 41 or something. I don't know. Sorry, I don't know my Russian, but I love how you can see <laughs> you can see through like a big futuristic see-through thing. <laughs> oh, I love it. Wow. Oh, check it out. We've got another vacuum fluorescent display. Beautiful. <laughs> and once again, we've got another. Um, you know, it, it, of course, you know, Soviets, they used all their own chips. Um, it was a thing. Yeah, got, they got the uh, staggered dip arrangement. They always loved the staggered dip arrangement. But, uh, yep, yeah, got some caps there. And that's the, that's the transformer down in this thing. Oh, man, come on. Yeah, they weren't very fond of uh, solder mask, were they? What is this thing? Look at this. I love... I love these. What? Anyway, let's um, let's flip it. We got some original uh, documentation. 
So I don't know, I can't make heads or tails out of that. Sorry, as one uh, operating manual, one a service manual. Technique, uh, uh, yeah, I reckon this is the technical. Is this technical reference manual? Ah, oh, yes, yes it is. Look, look, is that like theory of operation? Is that theory of operation? Could be. What is it? <laughs> it looks like a Geiger counter or something. Uh, I, there we go. As our probe, I assume that that, you don't shove that up your clacker. I think you uh, shove that on near the thing that you want to detect, I assume. Is that like a, oh, ah, oh, that could be a gate. Is that a, no, what does that do? I don't know what that does, but I have seen rotating things like that before in Geiger counters where they let, like it sets their, sensitivity or something like that but I, oh, I got no idea so that can can that come out what what the heck okay that's going to be a battery compartment for sure there we go we can put some uh Oh, where were the D cells, are they? Oh, I should have opened up the bottom of it because that's where the action is. Oh, what the 200 down to 0.1 watt? And like, I, uh, I'm not seeing it. CCCP, thank you very much. Um, 10 microamp meter movement. Uh, it, it, it's got to be a Geiger counter, right? I assume light. Is that like a backlight or something? I love how deep, I've never seen a meter that d embedded that deep into a product. Why? And we've got some real crusty burger earphones. Look at these, what, how does that, does it, that straps on your head? Um, <laughs> have you ever seen a set of headphones like that before? Wow, wow, and this is obviously uh, military thing but yeah anyway um that plugs into the side here and that, that's it's got to be a geiger counter so yep if i translate that in real time with my uh shoe phone here it's uh yeah i see uh rotogen yeah rotogen meter dose rate meter yep yep limits and things ah look <laughs> yeah it's a geiger counter I would take it apart and there are four screws on the top and this thing will actually pull out but I've gotten the screw out of the knob but the knob is just it, it's not it's not coming off so I oh, I don't it's too nice I don't want to don't want to break it it's not budging does anyone anyone got a clue um Bueller Bueller and there's a info sheet on the outside of the thing, but yeah, I might, until somebody can uh, clue me in, I'm sure somebody in the comments will clue me in with the details of uh, this puppy. Might, I'm running out of time for this video, it's like it's way too long, it's like an hour long already. So um, whether or not this thing works, I've got no idea, I'll have to power it up. Why it's got, like, it's got three batteries. Are they all in series or is there, a, like, a separate one for something else? Are they only 1.5 volts? Are they something else? I don't know. More investigation required. No, wait. Hang on. Um, they provided this battery eliminator thing. Check it out. Which, like, screws into the top here and then they've got clamps. Like, but the, even these aren't, like, oh, positive. Yeah, there you go. Positive and negative. I assume that's 12 volts. I assume that I can just connect that up to 12 volts, right? <clears throat> 24 volts or 12 volts by the looks of it. So I'll set it to 12 and then I'll, I'll just try and power it up. <laughs> well, I powered it up and it's drawing uh, 200 milliamps at uh, 12 volts when I switch it on. I assume that's like a test button. It actually draws 89 milliamps when it's presumably or off or is that just the light? Oh yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, that's just it. Yeah, that's, that's just the light. I can see the bulb. See the bulbs down in there? <laughs> Cute. But yeah, um, 88 milliamps. Um, doesn't do, doesn't do diddly squat. The meter's not doing anything. Like, I presume this would have been some sort of test mode or something like that. But, um, 
Yeah, no, I am getting nothing. Not that I have, like, no one's sources to use it with or anything like that. So, unfortunately, I can't really show you much with it. Hmm. But anyway, it's very cool. Like, I love that, like, the green and the construction of it and the probe just, like, looks absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, I assume that's sort of... Is that some sort of, uh, you know, gate thing that... Oh, 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 there we go. Yeah, no. So does that... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if you've got any idea, leave it in the comments so I can translate the entire manual. Anyway, I think that'll do it for today's mailbag. So let me know all about the TV back... Oh, it's boring now, isn't it? Because i got nothing here. I guess the uh, backdrop is, like, the way to go. But please let me know um, if it's too busy, if you want me to... I don't know, I can actually move the... I'm thinking about maybe moving the desk out so we get sort of, like, the blurred background. Because this camera, on the top of it, I've just hit the defocus button. So now it should be, well, more defocused. There should be more defocused in the background. So I could like hold up that and then I'm, I should be, I should be very defocused or is it going to track on my eye? Um, and come back and yeah, anyway, let me know because the further the backs are, the racks are in the background, the more defocused I can get them given the lens and everything else. So yeah, let me know about that. But some people are going to like it, some people aren't, whatever. Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, hope you enjoyed Mailbag. Welcome to 2021. Catch you next time.